I've, ta I've taken a look at the book and I think it's interesting I and mean, the topic is, you know, speaking to you. Um, so let's get started with just having an overview. This is the first edition, but you mentioned prior to talking to me that there's like a, a prior book. Yeah, um, there's, there's right. this nice book, which you have there, and there's uh, the prior book, second edition, C++, game animation programming, which, yeah, it could be seen as prior book. You start there with uh, nothing, an empty window, write your renderer and um, load uh, a GLTF model. And in the second book, you start with loading the GLTF model and, yeah, go on from there with animations. So for for people who are new to the topic, it's better to have the first book, right? Uh, yeah, it, it would be nice uh, if you're completely new and you want to know how GLTF files work or how to write a basic renderer in this, uh, in this case, yeah, get the first book. But if you know, okay, I know C++, I know how renderer works, and I just want to know how to load a model uh, and how to animate it, uh, then the second book is good. Okay, so let's look at animations and what that has to do with C++. Um, Scroll down a bit here. We see the table of contents. Um, so we are having this open asset input library, which you use throughout the book, I think, often. Yeah, this is the, the main part of the book because in the first book, I used uh, tiny GLTF uh, to uh, load the model files, and it gets a bit exhausting if you try to uh, load for every single uh, format and uh, stride and whatever there is in the files. So I decided to go uh, just with the finished, ready to use uh, library and say, okay, let's go. Let's go. And uh, uh, don't care about how to import it. Just say, I want to have this file and uh, here it is. Makes sense. So the second chapter is about uh, moving animation calculations from CPU to GPU. Um, so we're directly jumping into GPU programming in a second. second yeah. Chapter. yeah, nice. This is, uh, it's oh. nice, it's heavy, uh, I think, uh, because uh, GPU is your friend. It's not your enemy if you are trying to parallelize stuff. Uh, use GPU, mm -hmm. I use a lot of compute shaders there. I even use the GPU as storage. So. Um, I pre-calculate all the animations and store it in the GPU. And when I try to replay it, I have just to do a memory lookup, which is uh, obviously much faster than doing more calculations. Um, yeah, it may heavy, maybe heavy for the uh, people who don't know how to uh, work with the GPU. But I try to be gentle and not to push you into it, but uh, to describe what to do, how to do it. Um, so uh, yeah. You, just learn how to uh, use the GPU for not just uh, drawing models. All right. With yeah, compute shaders. This is fun stuff. <laughs> All right. Chapter three. Yeah, it's down there. Yeah, chapter three. I see down here adding yeah. a selection. Yeah, this is a part this uh, where I was. Uh, I, I was missing the feature uh, in, in many examples I found. Like, oh, you, you may have a free camera to uh, do something, but uh, if you have like 20, 30, 100 uh, instances on the screen, how do you select this one? Um, in the first book, you had uh, IMGUI uh, buttons, and you had to go through every model and see, oh, there's the, uh, some coordinate errors appearing. And I, I thought this is not the right way anymore. And I added a visual, visual selection that you can just click on a model and uh, it's selected. And you can also do like in a real big editor of game engines, you can move it around with the mouse, you can rotate the model, you can scale it all by using the mouse instead of having uh, work with IMGUI. And directly I see here you're using MGUI. Yeah and shared pointer. So is that shared pointer coming from the library then? Or is that your choice to? Uh, this is uh, my choice to save the currently selected instance. Okay. I 
didn't want to use some other part. I mean, I may overuse shared pointers uh, a bit, but I love it. OK. And I see those there's, a, there's like, of course, a lot of visuals in this book because animation, et cetera, is something that you do in, in the visual space. Um, maybe we should talk a bit about what are you using for, you know, what, what's your code running on now? I saw in going uh, yeah, SMP, IMG UI, I use uh, GLFW for, uh, for the window management. In the last chapter, I also use SDL for audio and uh, GLM is heavily used, uh, the OpenGL compatible math library. Um, it works on Linux, it works on Windows, it works with MSVC, it works with Clang and uh, GCC. So. Uh, if you have a computer, uh, it most probably works. It, it, it's, it has an OpenGL and a Vulkan version. So whatever you have, it should work. Um, then we have, this is a part, this is like part one, which we see the first three, the first chapters. Yep. And then you continue into part two, transforming the model viewer into an animation editor. Yeah, um, this is something. Uh, there is uh, like like two parts uh, in in chapter four. Uh, it's uh, I wanted to get rid of the menu, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you could just close it. That's okay. But for fancy screenshots, I added uh, a separate mode where all the stuff is uh, hidden. You can uh, use a hotkey mm -hmm. and uh, really hide everything and just have the uh, instance on screen, which may be nice to see yeah, how it would be in a real game instead of just, oh, I'm, I'm having the editor view on screen. This is the first part. And uh, the second part of this chapter is implementing a simple Andorido system, so mm -hmm. uh, which I uh, heavily use when I do stuff. Oh, I'm rotating this uh, instance, and uh, you forget to press like the shift key, and you have a wrong rotation. Mm, yeah. Okay. Control Z. That's it. And uh, that's also one part of the uh, user experience, I would say, which is nice to have. And you, you know, you're missing this. If you try the first one or two chapters or the first book, you immediately see. Okay. Yeah. Please do this. I need this because you're making mistakes and uh, having to start over again or fiddling with IMG UI. No. How, how much do you go into MGUI? Uh, uh, very little. It's just used as a tool. Um, you, you use it to write, to, to write an editor. So, yeah, to, to just draw the controls. This is the main part. There is a, later a chapter about uh, a node editor version, which uses uh, the IMGUI as uh, yeah, ba base library, mm -hmm. uh, which I explain how to implement it. But uh, usually I just have a couple of lines of mm -hmm. just do this and you have uh, a collapsing header and you have a slider and that's it. So then you continue to uh, saving and loading the configuration, of course, which is very useful. To, yeah, this is um, also part you you will miss uh, quite fast. Um, I had it in the later chapters when I implemented a new feature where load and save was not added yet. And uh, oh, I have to do this and this and you had a crash or something didn't work and you really had to load the state and do step, step, step. And that's a point where you say, no, I want to have a version where I can say, okay, I can save current state, close the program, open it next yeah. day. and continue to work or save my fancy world or so this uh, i i thought it's important to have such tooling in the program uh that you see okay i can really work with it and not uh, one shot working yeah i, I agree with that that's always nice when you kind of basically even if you debug etc that you kind of can load the configuration yeah um, then you're talking about, you know, now, now we're getting back to actually doing work, which is like relevant to the camera system. Um, yeah, this is uh, also a nice and interesting part, uh, camera handling. Um, you have a free camera. Yes, you have it. But uh, what happens 
if you want to have a third person camera, what is needed? Uh, how does it look, look like? And uh, I added a couple of cameras, like a follow cam and a third person cam, even a first person cam, which uses the bones of the model or the, the instance which you selected. So if the instance shakes your head, you really see the entire screen shaking, that you really see, okay, this is first person view and how it's made in a basic fashion. It's uh, not uh, the Unreal Engine style optimized and whatever version, but uh, you will understand how it basically works to use a first person camera or a third person camera. Nice. Um, and then we continue into the third part when we basically you know, go into the more advanced part of the book about tuning character animations. Yeah. Chapter seven. Yeah, that's where I use uh, the, the lookup tables <clears throat> instead of um, having to calculate animations by hand. I'm, I'm pre-calculating everything. It's uh, maybe something I, I learned on the C64 or so, but it, if you can uh, store something uh, somewhere, uh, it may be better. You uh, have to have a trade-off between speed and space. But in modern GPUs, you have so much uh, RAM that you can easily spare a couple of megabytes to store the animations. And then ooh, it's just a lookup instead of um, mm -hmm. uh, lengthy calculations. True. Um... Let's see, chapter eight is then on uh, collusion detection. That's always interesting. Yeah, this is the, the, the basic collision detection after uh, talking a bit about um, how it basically works um, mm -hmm. and uh, what pitfalls you have. Like, oh, I cannot check every instance against every other instance because this is too costly. Um, I'm introducing a, a, a quad tree. Uh, and just mm -hmm. put uh, like a top-down view, like Doom style, um, just 2D versions of the model instances into the quad tree, and I can easily check if two of the instance uh, axis aligned bounding box squares overlap uh, without uh, much effort. And even if you have hundreds of instances on the screen, it takes virtually no time to find, okay, these two are colliding. And I even added a second tier for the uh, collision detection with uh, bounding spheres. So every bone of the model gets a sphere, which is adjustable. And uh, once the uh, AABBs detect a collision, then the spheres will also be checked so that you really see, OK, they are not just near, they're really colliding. This is as an example with fancy graphics, fancy debugs, where you really see, OK, there's a, a yellow ABB, this is okay, there's red, it's colliding. Oh, it's, now I have uh, red spheres for spheres are colliding that you really can see it in action, not just, oh, I do it theoretically, but you have the real action to see and to toggle it on and off what happens. Yeah, and then we continue with, you know, adding more things like behavior and interaction, um, advanced animation blending, yeah, face animation. This is fun uh, head and face animation where you can really say, okay, I make the character smiling or happy or uh, angry and you can turn the head around separately from the body. This is something uh, you're mostly missing in tutorials where you get, oh, two lines or a sentence, how it works. I really describe how it's done uh, in detail. You can look up the code, how it's uh, made in code. And uh, if you understand how it works, it's totally easy, but the effects are great if you have uh, the character nodding to you or uh, mm -hmm. smiling or uh, combining with the wave animation, the guy, this is uh, always fun to play around with. Yeah, so generally what I've already noticed prior, but um, you, you, you do use a lot of uh, modern C++, like for example, here you use SV copy instead of a loop. Um, yeah. And, I, I, I love this. You, you use it in a loop, to be fair, right? Yep. Yeah. But such as programming, right? Sometimes you use this, sometimes you use the other thing. Um, and 
Right. Mm -hmm. Then we go like adding simple navigation. Um, yeah. Well, in the, right. in chapter, chapter eleven is I think uh, loading a level because you have an instance. You have instance col uh, col collision. Uh, this is nice, but uh, well, yeah. the real game is mostly inside a level. Uh, how do the instances stay on ground? This may be an interesting question for anyone uh, who just plays games. So. How is it made this my that my character does not fall through the ground or in case of bugs falls through the ground um you can provoke it in the in the code that uh, you have this effect and then uh, it goes stuff like a uh, in inverse kinematics for the feet that if your character goes up some slope that your the feet are not going to the ground but staying on top of of the ground simple navigation a star navigation that you can say okay this character mm -hmm will move from here to there and you see oh there's a path drawn and the character walks the path that you really see okay what's behind all this magic that you, that you only see in games but uh you want to know how it works yeah that's i, I remember a star and stuff like that you know there, there was a time when i wanted to be a games programmer too but um, and then you continue into basically, you know, creating immersive interactive worlds. Yeah, well, it's about sound and graphics, what you could do. Um, I added a simple music player and footsteps and uh, light changes that you can really control time of day, simple fork effect that you can uh, see what what does it make with your level if you have a clear level or a foggy level a dark level and some special music in the background that you really see okay i have level but the same level with different light settings and a different music uh, makes it totally different game this is something uh, just to read on and to play around with that's true um Okay, and that's it. Fourteen chapters. Right, that's it. So that's the whole book. And at the end, you're creating uh, actually like you know your own map and creating immersive interactive worlds. And that's rather nice, I think. If, if that's like something, uh, and I, I think there's a lot of people which you know are interested in getting to know how this works. And, um, and then there's of course those folks which don't work in the gaming industry, but might, you know, have their uh, own set of experiences with game programming in the past and would like to know how, you know, how, 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 how would it be done today? Um, yeah. So let's go over to the interview part.